Hey guys, in this week's video we're going right back to basics. I'm going to teach you about beats, bars and phrases, which is going to help you get in perfect DJ mixes. Let's do it. Okay guys, so in this week's video I'm going to teach you about counting beats, bars, phrases and I'm going to teach you the basics about song structure. As a beginner DJ this is really going to help you. Have you ever been there where you don't really know when you need to start mixing the two songs into each other and you're just kind of guessing? This is the video that's going to explain to you when you need to be mixing and I'm going to give you some stuff at the end that's going to help you out. So first things first, I wanted to say that I'm going to be explaining a lot of this stuff on Ableton because it's just easier to show you. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you on Serato the same kind of stuff. So we're all in the same place. Cool. So let's jump on Ableton. Okay, guys. So let's start with the absolute basic. What's a beat? A beat is just this. It's usually just a kick drum. You guys already know that though. The second thing you need to know is about a bar. A bar is typically four of these. So if I was to get this and duplicate it, and you'll have four, it's now a bar. That's a bar. Now it's a bar under the time signature four by four, okay? If you look up in this top left-hand corner, you'll see four by four. 99 to pretty much 100% of the songs you're gonna be DJing are written in this time signature, which just means there's four beats to a bar. Now I could potentially change this to three, which now means technically there's three beats to a bar. So if I was to remove these two here, remove and put another one here, you'll see there's one, two, three, which means if I was to loop this, it would be like this, one, two, three, one, two, three. However, none of the music you're gonna be DJing has that time signature. Everything you have is four by four. So as you can see, as soon as I change the grid then, you can see these kind of lighter gray strips and darker gray strips. Those are bars. And if I was to just put that in here and have an extra bar here, it now sounds like this. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. Those are bars within a four by four time signature. That's all you need to know about time signatures is there's four beats to a bar. So the next thing you need to know about is counting bars. You kind of need to be able to count bars because there's different chunks of time within songs where different things are gonna happen. I'm gonna come on to that in a second though. If you wanna count bars, the way to do it is you go one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. In other words, at the beginning of every bar where you typically count the one beat, you're just gonna count up, so one, two, three, four, on the one beat. You're gonna replace the one with a two, with a three, with a four. Okay, this is really basic stuff, but I just wanna explain it to you because it'll help you. And it's a little thing you can practice and get good at, just going one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. Okay, so why is it important to be able to count bars? Because every so many bars in a song, something new will happen. Drums will be brought in, percussion, singing, something new will happen in the song, okay? And this is called a phrase. And you need to know about phrases because as you get better at DJing, you'll start by just matching the beat. Then you'll realize it's important to match the bars so the bars start on the one at the same time. And then as you get further into DJing, you'll real, realize it's really cool to be able to match phrases at the same time because things will just work really nicely. I'm gonna show you this more later on, but basically that's why it's important to always be aware of beats, bars, and phrases. So the other thing I wanted to tell you is all music is just a series of loops. If you've ever played an instrument like the guitar or piano, you'll notice that most songs are just four chords or so that just kind of loop round and round. And the rest of the time they're singing on top of it or drums or something or other is happening based around the same four chords that are just looping. Okay guys, so let's jump on Ableton. I'm gonna show you a really basic track I've created here. Now tracks are literally made by different instruments being stacked on top of each other to create a symphony of different sounds, which you can kind of see on the screen here. I've got different lanes. This lane's got a kick drum, this lane's got a clap, this has got a shaker on it, and all these different layers are gonna come in as the song goes on and you're gonna have different phrases happening. So as you can see, I've got four beats here. One, two, three, four. That's one bar. This is four bars. This is eight bars. After eight bars, 
new instruments are introduced. Then after another 8 bars, taking up to 16 bars, another instrument is introduced. So there's three phases, phrases going on here, okay? So let's just listen to it and count along in your head, okay? One, two, three, four, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here we go. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Here we go. So there we go, you could visually see the song as it built up and the different phrases that were involved. So the next thing I wanted to demonstrate to you guys was the fact that all different songs have a very, very similar structure to them. So what I've got here is two royalty free songs and three famous songs. I've got two tracks here from Epidemic Sound and I've got three tracks here to Jamo, Booty Bounce, Tremor and Animals. They're all 128 beats per minute, so they all go at exactly the same time. And I wanted to show you how they've all got stuff in common in terms of their structure. So, one thing I wanted to show you is that the intros to all of these songs are 16 bars. So this is a bar here, and just to show you, if I was to press play on one of them, you'd hear it's four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. It's the same for all of them. If I click on this one here, you can hear one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Intro, there's eight bars, and then there's a new phrase, so you'll hear something change in all these songs after eight. But the actual intro goes all the way up to 16, okay? And it happens on all these songs. Then there's a breakdown in the song. So a breakdown is where typically some instruments are taken away. Then there's a build, then there's a drop. Now the build and the drop all come at slightly different times, but the one thing that's for sure is that all these songs have 16 bars intro. So let me just show you. This is one song. I'm not gonna count along this time, uh, but I'll have some numbers on the screen so you can see when the bars and beats are. It'll come from intro, after eight bars here, you'll hear something change in the song. An element will be added. And then at the breakdown, you're gonna hear something being taken away, so it'll kind of break right down. So, just have a listen to these two tracks that are royalty free, I'm allowed to play these, okay? Ready to hear something change? Still the intro, but a new element has been added. Ready for the breakdown? Same if I was to get this track here, it starts off like this. And you'll hear after eight bars, something changes. And then the breakdown, you'll hear it literally break down. And if I was to show you just a little bit of these songs that I don't own the rights to, you'll hear the same thing. So you'll hear after eight bars, a new element is added, okay? So let's listen to Chujamo first. You'll hear like a hi-hat come in. Okay, with Tremor you'll hear like a whoosh come in after eight bars. Same kind of thing. So they've all got a similar thing going on, and then the breakdown, everything just breaks down. So let's listen to the breakdowns here. Let's listen to the breakdown of Two Jarmo. And let's listen to the breakdown of Animals. Perfect. Now the next thing I want to show you if I zoom out is how all these songs are different lengths. 
So they all have different stuff going on past this point. However, if you guys scroll along, what I've also done is I've taken the same songs and matched up the endings. And something else you're going to notice is they've all got 16 bars of outro as well. So if I zoom in, you can see I've marked out outro here with the remaining 16 bars. And the funny thing is, all the outros are basically identical to the intros. Have a listen. <laughs> The other thing you'll notice as well is after eight bars of the outro, there's a new phrase where it kind of breaks down even more so you know you haven't got long left before the end of the song. So after eight bars, you'll hear it break down. Okay guys, so what is the relevance of all this? Well, the relevance is if you are striving to have that absolutely perfect mix, you need to be aware of when the last 16 bars of the song is, and obviously the first 16 bars, because if you can align those phrases, it will make your job as a DJ so much easier. Okay guys, there's one last thing I wanted to briefly touch upon before we move on to Serato, and that is how to find the one beat of a bar. So you remember how we were saying a second ago, you can count bars by going one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. The numbers we're counting, the one, two, and three, are the first beat of a bar. So you need to be able to hear when those one beats actually come along. And this is a little bit tricky to actually explain, but essentially it comes down to knowing your music quite well. Remember at the beginning of this video I said all music is just a series of loops? The first chord, second, third chord, fourth chord, and then they loop round. You need to just be able to hear in a song when that loop comes to its conclusion and starts again. And that is how you will find it. So I'm just going to play this track I was messing around with this morning. And I'm not going to start it on the one, I'm going to start it halfway through a bar. And I want you to not really look at the screen at this point. Look away and just see if you can work out when that one of the beat comes in. And what will help you is the other instruments, okay? So you'll hear the instruments kind of conclude and start to loop again. Okay, so have a listen and see if you can hear when that beat is happening and I will start to count along after a couple of moments so you can hear that if you've got it right or wrong. Did you guys get it right? The way you're going to do this is just by listening to the phrase of a song. And the phrase will just end up going back and repeating itself. The moment it repeats itself, that is the one of a song. And that is just going to take you guys practice. But you can practice with different songs and see if you can hear it kind of conclude and loop around. That will give you a good hint as to when the one of a bar starts, okay? Okay guys, so I quickly jumped on Serato to show you how everything I just explained fits perfectly with Serato, okay? So beats and bars. If you look at Serato, you're going to see there's little dashes above the songs here. If you can't see the tracks, you need to click here and you need to make sure that you go to extended view, okay? Then you'll see one and then four dashes and then two and then four dashes. And basically what's happening is Serato is guessing the beats and the bars and it's usually right 99% of the time, okay? So that's bars for you within Serato. So if you wanna make sure two bars are aligned, you've gotta look for the lines with the little numbers above and make sure that those two are in line with each other to know that the bars are matched up. The phrasing is gonna be coming down to you more because Serato doesn't really pick up on phrasing, it just picks up on beats and bars. And um, just a really quick tip for you guys. Um, if you think that your grid is off on Serato, you've gotta click edit grid here and you click a set point at the beginning of every bar. So you click set on beat one, uh, set on 
bar two, set on bar three, and you'd have to set your beat grid manually, okay? So it's a little tip for you if, you if you don't think that Serato has got the grid perfectly. I may do another video on that some other time though. Okay guys, so I wanna leave you with one quick exercise to show you how relevant everything is I've been talking about is, okay? So what I want you to do is put two songs in Serato that, ha that are the same speed and uh, have an intro and an outro, so it's good to use EDM songs, okay? I want you to get track A and I want you to go right to the end of it, right up to the final bar. You can see here this track is 140 bars long, okay? So we're going to go back 16 bars from this. Remember what I said, guys? All, well, 90% of EDM songs have a 16 bar intro, a 16 bar outro. So we're going to go 16 bars back from this, 140, that means it's 124. I'm just going to go all the way back, okay? to 124, okay? And I'm gonna put a hot cue there. So we know from that hot cue onwards, we've got 16 bars to the end of the song, okay? It's also the place in this song where the outro starts. We're gonna go to track B and we're gonna put a hot cue on the first beat there. So we know now, if I was to press play on both of them, the outro of song A would finish just as the breakdown of track B begins. In other words, the intro and the outro are the same length, and then the intro of track B will go into the breakdown. So it means I don't even have to do that much. In fact, I'm not really gonna be doing that much, just to show you how relevant this is. So here's the exercise I want you to do. I want you to go back a couple of bars from where that red uh, cube point is. You can see on the screen here, that's where the cube point is and this white marker is gonna come closer and closer and closer to that red mark, okay? When it hits that red mark, I want you to count in and hold down and press play on track B so the two red hot cues align perfectly. And then all I'm really gonna do is take away a bit of the bass from track uh, A and just let the two tracks play out and you'll see that they end perfectly, track A ends perfectly with the breakdown of track B. Okay, let me show you this. One, two, three, four, one. Align them and bring up the volume and take away the bass from track A. I'm not gonna do anything else. See how well those two just went together? The one ended perfectly as it went straight into the breakdown of track B. That's why everything I've said in this video is relevant, okay? And of course, if you wanted to, you could mess around with the highs and stuff and get rid of some clashing frequencies, but that's it, okay? So guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there today, okay? Hopefully this has helped and you've seen why everything I've said is relevant. If it has, make sure you like the video, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. If you guys are brand new to DJing and you want to know all about it, go and check out beginnerdjlessons.com. If you want to learn all about making your own songs in Ableton, go and check out beginnerabletonlessons.com where I've got courses on everything you need to know about these two subjects. And uh, guys, I'll see you next week. Ciao.